Most anyone could probably recognize a map of India, but very few people will realize what this small island chain to the side is, and that it too is indeed one of two offshore island territories that belong to the South Asian country. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands are effectively the Hawaii of India, albeit with much less tourism perhaps, but the similarities do exist. Relatively little is known about the island chain when compared to the much more populous mainland, and even less is known about the indigenous inhabitants of the islands. And there are indeed natives to these islands, and their origin is very divergent from that of Indians from the mainland. The territory, as can be expected, is divided into two main island groups, that being the larger and more populous Andaman Islands to the north, and the Nicobar Islands to the south, where only a small minority of the population exists. The closest distance between any of the islands and the mainland of the country of India is easily over 700 miles, with the island chain arguably being closer to Southeast Asia than South Asia, with neighbors such as Burma, Thailand, and Indonesia's Sumatra Island. Currently, the population of the island sits at around 400,000 people, with an area of about 3,000 square miles, making it one of India's smallest and least populous territories. Even though the islands are geographically and geologically more aligned with Southeast Asia, there's been an Indian presence on the island since the 1600s when the Maratha Empire was at its height and annexed the island chain as a part of India. Soon after this period in the mid-1700s, the islands were claimed by two European colonial powers, that being Denmark and later on Austria of all countries. However, due to the looming British colonial dominance in South Asia, Denmark would later sell the islands in their entirety to the British Empire, where it was incorporated as part of the British Raj. The Japanese Empire had significant influence over the islands for a brief period during World War II, but the islands were once again returned to India shortly thereafter. The first inhabitants of any of the territories of the modern Andaman and Nicobar Islands were the Andamanese people around 30,000 years ago, who appear to be Melanesian in origin, most likely related to the Negrito peoples of Southeast Asia, who are in turn probably related to the peoples of Papua New Guinea and Australian Aborigines. They have very dark skin and extremely coarse and curly hair, resembling Sub-Saharan Africans in appearance, yet are genetically very disparate from any modern African populations because of tens of thousands of years of separation. Today, native Andamanese populations such as the Great Andamanese and the Jarawa number only around 1 to 2,000 in total, and this number is even lower if only people of full Andamanese descent are included, as it was very common for the Andamanese to intermarry with Europeans or mainland Indians in the past and present. The native Andamanese presence and population was significantly reduced from 1800 to 1900 after waves of immigrants from the mainland spread throughout the islands. The Andamanese population was devastated after exposure to new diseases wiped out huge chunks of their population since they were isolated from any outside group for so long and had little natural immunity to Eurasian diseases or plagues similar to early Native Americans. Today, the Andamanese live a rather primitive lifestyle and the Indian government does their best to preserve their people and culture from natural disasters and invasive threats. One of the most famous groups of Andamanese people would have to be the Sentinelese people from North Sentinel Island. Because of North Sentinel Island's isolation and distance from the main Andaman Islands, the natives of the islands are believed to be one of the last groups of humans to exist in the entire world that have not been contacted by the outside, with all attempts at contact with the natives by either independent explorers or by the national government ending in failure or tragedy. In 2001, when members of the Indian government attempted to collect data on population for the Indian census by approaching the island by boat, the natives actually threw spears at them and they were forced to flee. It is for this reason that no one really has any clue just how many people live on this island. Estimates range from as many as 500 to fewer than a couple dozen inhabitants. The southern island chain of Nicobar is also believed to have been first inhabited by humans thousands of years ago. However, the natives to these islands, known as Nicobarese people, are actually of Austroasiatic Southeast Asian origin and are relatively new arrivals compared to the Andamanese. The Nicobarese are divided into a few separate groups and speak languages that are related to Khmer and Vietnamese, 
of mainland Southeast Asia, as well as the Munda languages of Northeast India. Their appearance is clearly closer to the surrounding modern Southeast Asian groups, such as Burmese and Thai peoples. Their population was not as heavily affected by recent immigration as the Andamanese, yet they are almost entirely confined to the southern Nicobar Islands. Because of efforts from European as well as Indian missionaries, the Nicobarese are almost entirely Christian today, while the Anamanese still practice their original animistic religions. Today, the island's racial and genetic composition is vastly different than its original makeup thousands of years ago. Native Nicobarese people make up perhaps only 10% of the population, while Indians from the mainland make up the other 90% because of mass immigration taking off in the 1950s to 60s. Concerning those from the mainland, about 50% of them are North Indo-Aryan groups, such as Hindi-speaking peoples and Marathi peoples, but especially Bengali people from the state of East Bengal, as well as Bengali Hindu migrants from the country of Bangladesh. Bengalis are currently the largest ethnic group on the islands at over one quarter of the population. South Indian Dravidian groups, such as the Tamil, Telugu, and Malayali people, make up around 40% of the islands, being greatly overrepresented, seeing how on the mainland, Dravidian speaking populations make up only 20% of India's population. The native Andamanese people are almost non existent, making up less than 1% of the population and are confined to the fringes of North Andaman Island, or in the case of the Sentinelese, another island entirely. Immigration to the islands from any neighboring country is relatively low, and in fact it is far more common for non-resident Indians to move abroad to Southeast Asian countries such as Malaysia or Singapore from the Andaman and Nicobar Islands than the other way around. Not many people know this, but there was actually a plan by the British government in the 1940s to actually make Andaman and Nicobar a sovereign country independent from India or the UK. They wished to preserve the small mixed-race minorities of South Asia and Burma known as Anglo-Indians and Anglo-Burmese respectively. The Anglo-Indians were formed as a cohesive group in the late 1800s when British soldiers had children with Indian women from various regions of India and the Anglo-Burmese were formed in much the same fashion. They wished to resettle all people of paternal English descent in the former British Raj, numbering perhaps a few hundred thousand at the time, onto the islands, fearing for their safety, thinking an extreme anti-British backlash would follow after Indian independence. However, the plan never came to fruition, and no significant violence ever beset the Anglo-Indians following independence, although the Anglo-Burmese did face harsher discrimination by the new Burmese government. Today, Andaman and Nicobar are a good example of major population migration to a new region from non-European immigrants, and their current ethnic makeup reflects the waves of concurrent immigration that have greatly influenced the islands from antiquity to the present day. It's a mysterious and fascinating part of India that not many people, including Indian citizens, know a lot about. I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of my new Indian subscribers that have decided to support the channel after viewing my last video on India, which is just totally blown up. I think it's around 300,000 views, which in my opinion, it totally doesn't deserve, but thanks for liking and sharing the video nonetheless. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts on the Andaman and Nicobar Islands down in the comments below. Uh, let me know if you've ever been there before, if you plan on going there for vacation, and if you'd like to support the channel so that I can get better audio, video, and editing equipment, go ahead and check out my Patreon, and I'd greatly appreciate your donation. There's a link in my channel description. And the uh, Q&A answers are coming in a video soon, so don't worry about that. Oh, and lastly, this video is actually a request from a viewer of mine, so if you have a request for a video topic that you want me to cover, please send me an email at themasonman1 at gmail.com. I'll have a link in the description down below. I would normally say just leave me a comment below, but there's just no way that I can possibly respond to every single comment I get, although I do really appreciate the kind words and support. As always, thanks for watching everyone, this has been Mason, and I'll see you next time.